Hey, this is Josh from Brasa Support, and today we're gonna to be shimming your Encore ESP. So if you found that you were grinding at say setting 10 or so on your ESP for espresso, but now you're seeing yourself grind, having to grind finer and finer and you're down at the bottom of this espresso range, you might be a good candidate for somebody who needs to shim their grinder. Now this isn't to be confused with somebody who is seeing large chunks of grinds in their grounds bin or an inconsistent grind size in their grounds bin. If that's you, you may wanna check out our troubleshooting grind quality video. You may have something like a broken burr holder that needs to be addressed before you address something like this. This is for people who are still able to grind for espresso, however, they're at the very bottom of the ESP range and we wanna shift those settings a little bit further up so that we can get a little bit more resolution out of our ESP range. So to do that, first you wanna make sure that your hopper is clear of any coffee beans. You can just dump those into a bowl and just set them aside for now. I've already done that with this grinder. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward. To remove your hopper, you wanna turn your hopper counterclockwise until the setting indicator on the front of the hopper is lined up with the arrow just past setting 40 on your grinder. Once it stops, you can just simply lift to remove it, just like that. And we'll set that aside. Now at this point, you may wanna go ahead and clean your grinder just to kinda of have a clean slate. I've already cleaned this grinder, so we're gonna go ahead and move forward with shimming. So first we're gonna remove your ring burr. To do that, you wanna lift up with your index and your thumb finger. There are two tabs located right on the outside of your ring burr holder. We'll just lift that straight up by the tabs and set that aside. Your hopper gasket should stay in your ring burr, but you just wanna make sure that that comes out as well. Okay, and now we're at the quick release knob. Now some older versions of the ESP have a shim that is in between the knob and the cone burr. If you find that yours has a shim, feel free to reach out to support at brazza.com and we'd be happy to help you get a new one. This new knob just basically removes the need of that shim in between the knob and the burr. So in order to remove the knob, we're going to turn it clockwise or righty loosey because it's reverse threaded. So we'll just keep turning it until it comes out. And there you go, you can set that aside for now. Now you're at the cone burr. You can just lift the cone burr straight up with your fingers. I'll do it in the left hand. There we go. And we can just set that aside. And so now we're at the paddle wheel. Now the paddle wheel is a little bit more tricky to get out. You could just dump it over to get it out, but you might risk dumping out all your shims too. And so I actually recommend using something like a pick tool to remove the rest of the items in here. So you can use a pick tool or a paper clip or some kind of small pointy object and you'll just insert that and just lift those straight out. Okay, there we go. We'll just set that aside for now. Same with the drive shim, you just lift it straight up. The drive shim is keyed onto the shaft and so it doesn't turn left or right, you'll just need to lift it straight up until it comes out, okay? And now we're to the shims and the felt piece. Now at this point, you can go ahead and just lift the felt out and inspect it. Make sure that there's no rips or tears in the felt piece at all. And we'll just set that aside. So in your grinder, you should have received something that looks just like this. This is our shim kit. And inside is two little tiny shims. So you'll wanna just add one shim to start with. One shim should get you about five clicks of adjustment resolution on your ESP range. I would recommend starting with one and going from there. If you find you need to add two, you may have another grind issue going on. So you might consider reaching out to us at support at rotsa.com. So let's go ahead and get this shim out and then add it to our grinder. Okay, here we go. I've got the shim out and we're just simply going to add it on top of the other shims. We don't need to remove the shims for any reason. And I would just recommend looking down and just making sure there's no residue or oils or grounds on top of the shims. You don't wanna sandwich anything between your shims. So I'm just gonna drop this right on top and just make sure it's seated on top of the other shims. There we go. And now we can start reassembly from this point. So first we'll start with your felt piece. Again, if there's any rips or anything, just reach out to us. We're gonna drop that in. So just kind of snug that down around the outside of the shims. Next is the drive shim. We wanna make sure the drive shim has these two little knobs pointed straight up. This will key the rest of the components into each other. So we're gonna drop this down with the knobs up. There we go. Next is our paddle wheel. 
Paddlewell has two little cutouts and those key right into the top of the drive shim on those two little knobs. And then again, the drive shim also has knobs and that'll go for the cone bird. So we'll drop those in. And then I like to turn it to kind of lock it into place until it doesn't move side to side. And then next is the cone burr. Two little knobs there that go over to the post on the paddle wheel. I just like to drop it in and then turn it as well until it clips into place. And you wanna make sure it's fully seated. You don't wanna go and adding your knob to the top because then you might experience some grind issues. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add the quick release knob here. And again, this is reverse threaded, so you're gonna to have to spin it counterclockwise in order to tighten it, so lefty tighty. And then once we get it threaded all the way down until it stops, we wanna just give it one small turn until it just barely turns the cone burr, and that's plenty tight. Okay, so from here, you're just gonna reassemble the ring burr and then your hopper, and then you're all good. So in order to install your ring burr, you want to take the red tab here and line it up with a red mark on your adjustment ring. And you'll just use the two tabs on top of the ring burr and just drop it right into place. And then just give it a little push down to make sure it's fully seated. You wanna make sure your hopper gas gets installed as well. All right, and now we can go ahead and get your hopper back installed. And to do that, you'll wanna line up the indicator on your front of your hopper with the arrow mark just past setting 40 on your grinder. And you're good to go ahead and turn into place. Now remember, you added a shim, and so if you were at, say, setting five before, you might be at the same grind size, but at setting 10. So you wanna start at just a little bit coarser whenever you go to dial in for espresso, and then I just kinda of recommend working your way down finer and finer until you find the right grind size for you, and just turn it into place. And there you go, and that's how you shim your Encore ESP. If you have any questions about shimming or grind quality or grind size, please reach out to us at supportedbrasa.com. My name was Josh. Thanks so much for watching.